Hey there guys, it's me, Suzanne, Tiny Chef. It's apple risotto day. I know you're excited, I am too. Uh, let's start off with a couple of things. So um, I have apples here on the farm and um, our apple tree makes the ugliest apples in the world. They're pretty ugly, but they taste really good. So just goes to show you can never judge a book by its cover. Um, sometimes kind of strange looking things can be tasty. I just want to show you um, what our apples look like. I'm not sure of the variety, but they taste like a Granny Smith. They're super delicious and a little bit tart. And when I cooked them today, they're sweet. So our apples are great for um, baking or anything like that. But you can see they've got some brown spots. And some little friends of mine have decided to enter the side over here. But you don't have to worry about that. You just cut that out. Don't waste it. And then with all the scraps, um, you could either put them in your compost pile. Or if you have a friend who has chickens, you could feed the scraps to the chickens. Or maybe you have chickens. That'd be awesome. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Suzanne Dillingham. People call me Tiny Chef. Um, I have been a chef now for 17 years. Say what? 17 years. It's been a long time. Um, I went to culinary school in Italy. I'm also a sommelier. Um, I studied wine uh, and food pairings for about four years, so I drank a lot of wine, ate a lot of good food. Um, so it's kind of my passion. So naturally I was drawn to farming and how foods were grown because um, it just helps you complete the circle of all of this wonderful thing you know um, delicious food delicious wine delicious produce it all goes together right so today we're making apple risotto sounds strange maybe not maybe it sounds delicious to you we're not gonna make it sweet we're gonna make a savory apple risotto so in this risotto dish it's super simple it's gonna be butter um, you could use a shallot if you if you can't find shallots. Um, our neighbors at Coldwater Creek Farm, they grow candy, um, I almost said candy apples, candy onions. Um, so either one of these will do. Just a small sweet onion will do for this dish. You're going to need salt, of course, always salt. You're going to need some fresh thyme. Beautiful. Pretty easy to find. You're gonna need some white wine. No, the wine did not come in this silly little bottle. I just love it, so I put the wine inside of it. But here's what you need. You need a good wine, a wine that you would drink, um, especially for this recipe, because the wine is gonna add a lot of flavor to this dish. So in some dishes, it kind of like is a part of the dish and it's gonna go together with everything and it's gonna be one of the flavors. And this one, you want it to stand out. So that being said, I want you to use something strong, a strong white wine. Um, strong meaning flavorful. I want a Sauvignon Blanc. I want a Riesling. I want a Gewürztraminer. Maybe a Chardonnay from France. That's what I have. I have a, um, a Beaujolais, um, a Beaujolais Blanc. Sorry, I blank. I blanked on the Blanc. Beaujolais Blanc, uh, which is a Chardonnay. Whatever you want to use, use it. But if you use something like a Pinot Grigio, it's not going to add that much flavor. So definitely go with a flavorful wine. I'm leaning towards Gewürztraminer. I don't know. I'm just in the mood. So if you can find a Gewürztraminer, use that. Going to need a little wine. And then you're going to need a pungent cheese. Pungent. What? I hope you like blue cheese because you can use any kind of blue cheese that you'd want to. If you're not a blue cheese fan, that's cool too. You could use Parmigiano Reggiano or uh, Pecorino Toscano, um, something like that, uh, a milder cheese. I like pungent cheese. So that being said, I've said that being said like 12 times. That being said, we're gonna use um, Humboldt Fog. Humboldt Fog. So the first time I heard about Humboldt Fog, I thought somebody was saying Humble Frog. Humble Frog. Prove it. Prove it. Not humble frog. Humboldt fog. But now you'll never forget the name because you'll think about that frog. Humboldt fog is a delicious uh, goat cheese. 
and it has a layer of vegetable ash in the center. Uh, I've gotten into this cheese a little bit over the past few days, as you can see, but I'm gonna show you this vegetable ash in the center so you can see what I mean. Can you guys see that? Maybe it's funny lighting. It's right there towards the bottom, that little layer right there. That's the vegetable ash. Fantastic flavor. And of course, I'm a big fan of any kind of goat or sheep's milk uh, products and the milk itself. Really good for you. So, um, the last thing, there, there are actually two things. Um, Y'all remember from the other videos how to make a stock, right? Uh, carrot, celery, onion, parsley, whatever you want to put into your pot, just throw it into the pot and let it cook for a few hours. That's what I did back here. This is nut punch in this pretty little vase. This is my stock. It's a vegetable stock. That's also key to your risotto because without a good tasting stock, you won't have a tasty risotto. Um, if you have to use the stuff in a box, fine. But check the ingredients, please. I want you to read all of the ingredients. If you can't recognize all of the ingredients or they're putting sugar or something in there, don't buy it. Or if they're putting like caramel coloring in it, why? Why do vegetables need car caramel coloring? I don't understand it. So either make your own or check the ingredients. There are some good ones out there. Lastly, if you want to take it from here to the next level, when we're done, we're going to put this balsamic vinegar as a little drizzle on top. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is get your apples going. Um, I've already done that for the sake of time today, so I don't keep you there for too long. We are going to be here for about 20 minutes, so stick with me. Um, these are the apples cut into small cubes. You're going to saute them in a little bit of butter, super easy, just until they're like al dente. Not completely soft, like mush, because then you'll make applesauce but soft enough that where it's not crunchy, okay? Then you're gonna pull it off and set it to the side. With the apples, you're just gonna peel them. And like I said, if you see where a little critter has gotten into it before you got to it, that's always a good sign, right? If the critter says it's okay, it must be. Hey, little critter friends. How you doing? You're gonna cut off a little piece like this, okay? All these apples are so good. They taste like Granny Smith apples. Make it jealous. All right, so that's it. Throw it in the pan with some butter. Cook it until it's soft. Moving on. Beautiful apples. Gorgeous. If you can't find a good local apple, which you should be able to at the farmer's market right now, if you can't find a good local apple, maybe you can find something like a bosque pear or a kind of firm pear uh, that would work well in this recipe as well. So I'm gonna turn on my pan now and we're gonna start the risotto, okay? This thing heats up really fast. My husband David gave it to me and it works great. All right, so we'll start off with a little butter in the pan about two tablespoons and I'm gonna use the red candy app <laughs> I did it again candy apple it's a candy onion I'm gonna use the red candy onion okay cut off the ends put it on the flat surface cut it in half there's a fancy way to do this I don't find that it, I find that my way works better so that's how I do peel it off the skin and you can just throw that into your stock because remember that those skins and the bottoms of the onion have a lot of flavor and fiber in them so that's good for your body keep your body moving it looks like it's gonna rain today I don't know where you guys are but I'm kind of digging it because it has been so hot here are y'all wondering about my overalls I've been wearing overalls almost every day lately because they are so comfortable. 
I'm telling you, and today I just wanted to be comfortable. I don't know. It's just a feeling I had. And David's making fun of me. That David's my husband. And he said, why are you wearing those things every day? I don't know. They just feel so good. So I ordered another pair yesterday because I can't get enough. All right. Onion in the pan. I'll let those cook for a second. Y'all remember the spurtle? My favorite kitchen tool. All right. Once the onions look a little bit translucent, then we're going to add the rice. And if you can remember from the other risotto class, it's good. But if you can't, I'm going to remind you. You're going to toast the rice now. That doesn't mean make it brown. That means when you see that the rice is super translucent, translucent on the edge and white in the center, it is ready to add your wine. Okay, we're a little bit hot here, but that's... There we go. Don't want to burn it. All right. There we go. All right, rice going in. Can you guys see? All right, it just takes a few seconds to toast the rice, and that was a cup of Arborio Risotto. So there are three different types. There might be more now, but there were three different types of risotto that you can pretty much find anywhere. Especially you can find Arborio Risotto. Um, Carnaroli and Violone Nano are the other two um, that you can find. And if you can find Carnaroli, Carnaroli, uh, that's great. But if you can find Violone Nano, that is like the Mac Daddy Cadillac of the risotto rice So get it if you can find it because it's delicious, delicious. All right, we are definitely toasted. I don't know if you can see it or not. Probably not. The lighting's kind of funny today. How y'all doing out there? I sure do miss you guys. All right, time for the wine. All right, so we're gonna cook down the wine for a second. Remember what I said, you wanna use um, a wine that you would drink, so that means it's good, it's not turned to vinegar. A wine that has good flavor, so you want something like a uh, Gewürztraminer, a Riesling, a Sauvignon Blanc, something like that. And then you're only gonna use like a half a cup of it, so that means stick it in the fridge and then it'll pair perfectly with your dinner. It's a great vegetarian dinner right here. But I'm just saying, if you wanted to take it to the next level and you're a meat eater, maybe some pork chops might be really good with this dish. All right, now we're too slow. I'm gonna pump it up a little bit. Once the wine is absorbed, um, the broth a little bit by a little bit, but I'm just gonna use this pitcher. But you're gonna ladle in your broth. And of course, I forgot to plug in my phone. I just saw low power mode. How about that? All right, fix. Can you guys see this? Yeah, there you go. Now we're cooking with gas. They used to say that. There was a chef who said, now we're cooking with gas. Any of y'all remember? Mac Daddy Rice. Hey, Dorothy. Hey, sister. All right, we're ready to add a little bit. So we're going to do this for about 15 to 20 minutes. That's how long it takes to cook risotto. That's about three cups or three and a half cups of stock. We may or may not need it all. Depends on your rice, depends on how fast you cook it. One of those things. But you'll know when it's al dente, when it's not too crunchy, but also not too soft. You'll pull it off the heat, add your butter and your cheese. All right, so let's talk about thyme now. That's the herb that we're gonna add to the dish. Um, thyme is really delicious. You could also use sage, but be careful because sage is very strong. I'm, I'm sure you guys know that, but um, I just like to say it. Like thyme, you can pretty much never have enough of it in there. Um, you could use parsley. You could even use rosemary if you wanted to. But again, sort of like sage, you wanna be careful to not overdo it. I'm the queen of overdoing everything. 
I got on my Windy Hill Farm shirt today. Whoop. Representing Windy Hill Farm, Charlie and Dana. Hey, what's up? If you guys live around the Charlotte area, you should go check out my friends at, uh, let's see, they're at the Regional Farmers Market. They're at the Atherton Mill Market. They are at, I think there's one uptown now. Um, but they have delicious pork and eggs and it's the best ever so go see them get your pork chop then go to another farmer and get your um your apples and then i want you to go see my friends at coldwater creek farm and get some of their um candy onions I had to catch myself these onions are so good let me tell you about these onions for those of you who have been following me you know that um I helped them out a few weeks ago with their onions. Um, the reason was because I'm part of their CSA. Um, if you don't know what a CSA is, it stands for Community Shared Agriculture. And it's a great way to um, help out a farmer by giving them a big check at the beginning of the growing season. And it helps you out because you get fresh produce every week. Um, you may get three to five pounds of okra and you gotta figure out what to do with it, but it's amazing. So um, we're part of their CSA, and because we share in, it's a farm share, um, sometimes they ask for help. So they ask for help, and of course I responded because I love them so much, and they needed help trimming onions. And when I tell you for five days, all I did was trim onions in the afternoon, trim, 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 like the feeling right here was numb by the end of it i was like you guys need to charge ten dollars a pound for these freaking onions because it's a lot of work and then brad was like no you don't even know and this was like i don't know beginning of july end of june or something he's like you don't even know it started in february with the onions when we planted the onion seed and then the fertilizer and then you know pulling up the dirt around it and then this that and the other and then the harvest and then the trimming and then the storage so it takes a lot of time a lot of time and a lot of knowledge to grow a ton of onions so the next time you go to the farmers market and they say I'm charging three or four pounds I mean three or four dollars a pound for some onions I'm not talking about at the grocery store onions from China. I'm talking about from a real farmer, local. Don't complain. Don't complain about it because it's hard work. <laughs> it's such hard work. I had no idea. I, I really didn't. I just thought you kind of put them in there and forgot about them. I was sort of like beekeeping too. When I first started keeping bees, I thought, well, you know, I got to know something about it, but I'll just throw some hives back there and that'll be the end of it. Nope. Nope pretty much March through June here it was super busy every week now it slowed down a little bit um, but we're in a fall flow now we've got buckwheat planted everywhere and goldenrod is blooming so fingers crossed that we'll have some honey soon for sale fingers crossed everybody put the good energy out into the universe so that's my onion story you better support your local farmers it's so important it's also really good for you and um, I don't know you know how I feel about that I don't like to preach too much because I understand sometimes you gotta have your little cheat meal you want to know what mine is I'm not gonna tell you should I tell you y'all know what it is um, so should I tell you yeah I want to tell you so when I was a kid I used to love easy Mac but because I feel guilty about it as an adult, which is probably not any better at all. But it makes my mind feel better when I eat it. Although I haven't had it in many months. Is uh, that Annie's mac and cheese. When you have a bad day and you need something to pump you up, that's it right there. Annie's mac and cheese. So now y'all know what my secret cheat meal is. What's your cheat meal? Anybody? Anybody get a good one? But mostly we try to eat all local. I can't even show you the other side of this 
uh, island right here is full of apples. I feel like all I've been doing lately is either pickling things or uh, freezing okra or yeah, I made pickled okra, froze okra, you name it, I did it to preserve it. Um, all right, this risotto is looking good. You want to stir it every once in a while. It's kind of a myth that you need to like stir the entire time. Everybody says, oh, I don't want to make risotto because I have to stand there and have to stir it. Oh my gosh, 20 minutes of your life, cry me a river. Make the risotto and you don't have to stand there the whole time. Check it every two minutes, three minutes, go over there, give it a stir, go fold your laundry, come back, do the same thing. Don't put it on too high, right? It'll be worth it, trust me. I love rice. Don't get me wrong, just dump the water in and go. But this is different. This is a process. You need to do this when you're in the right frame of mind. Are you feeling good? Kind of relaxing. The sound is really, really nice. Cry me a river. Yeah, cry me a river. Right? Cry me a river. Gotta make this risotto. So when the risotto is like five minutes out, We'll put the apples in it, give it a nice apple-y flavor, and also to cook them a little bit more, because remember I said when you cook the apples, you're going to cook them so they're al dente, not too soft, otherwise you make applesauce. If you do make applesauce by accident, I don't think it's that big a deal. What could you do? I like to be like the queen of fixing things, because if it can go wrong, it's going to go wrong at some point. So, if you do make applesauce, just mush it up and fold it in at the end. That'll be delicious too. The flavor will still be there. But I like the texture of having the little bites in it. And they got a little brown, which will add some like caramelized flavor to it. That's okay too. I didn't mean to do that earlier, but it happened. No big deal. All right, give it another stir. I've told y'all about this spurtle. I'm trying to get on QVC so I can be the Spurtle representative. Y'all write QVC and tell them I want to be the Spurtle queen. Because I love this thing. I do. I think we've talked about that before, but I'll remind you. That another weird thing about... I'm just sharing all my weird things with you today. Is that weird? A little bit? Sorry, right. I'm kind of weird. So, one of those things, weird things about me when I'm stressed, especially around the holiday time, I haven't watched it lately. I haven't been real stressed lately. That's a good thing. But during the holiday time, I like to turn on QVC and just put it on and watch it. And they talk about nothing for hours. And I especially love, um, there's a guy on there named David and he does uh, cooking stuff. He is great. I love David. So, hey David, I see you. I'm going to represent those fertiles. Alright, we're still a little bit crunchy. But only because it's been cooking for 12 minutes. So you got to hang in there with me. We're in it to win it, right? And if you want to dip out, I'm not going to judge. It's cool. You can dip out and then come back. Go fold some laundry. And then come back for the ending. It's kind of like a... Like a like a race or something. You know, the the beginning is really exciting and the end is really exciting, but some of that stuff in between is kind of like right? So, maybe right now you want to go do that or maybe you're having a good time. <clears throat> I'm having a good time cooking with you. All right. We've been doing this 13 minutes. 13 minutes. At the 15 mark, I'm going to add the apples. Again, with local apples, they're not going to be perfect looking. They probably don't have wax coating on the outside. Like when you're getting them from the grocery store, most likely they've got wax on the outside. That's how they keep them from bruising and all the things that happen to them naturally um, with shipping and things like that. They're probably picked when they're way under ripe so the nutrients aren't all there. I'm just saying, if you can, Go to the farmer's market right now, especially if they're in season where you live, and get you some good apples. They're going to be ugly, but they're going to be delicious. Do not judge 
by the outer appearance. Because, again, mine have, like, this strange, spotty, freckly stuff going on. And it's kind of wompy on this side. Y'all see how it goes in right there? And then maybe I might have, like, a little friend who might have entered right there. That's cool. Hey, friend. I got another friend right there. Hey, friend. Oh, I got two friends on that side. So somebody has been enjoying this before me. And that's what I'm saying. If they're liking it, you're going to like it too. I haven't been sprayed with anything crazy. If they're still alive, you'll be alive too. If you eat like this. But you could just cut that off. I mean, what's the big deal? I know some people who would throw that away. It's a shame. Alright, see? You just cut off the little spot. No big deal. Big two chickens. Alright. Oh, 15 minutes, guys. We need more stock. And we need apples. It's time for the apples. Alright, see these beautiful apples? See this awesome spurtle? Y'all gonna go get one, tell the truth. Y'all gotta get the spurtle now, right? You gonna go check it out. I don't work for spurtle. But if I did, I'd be a millionaire. are in and by the way we have made the switch to cast iron once you get in the groove with cast iron it's no big deal like I used to even be in the same boat as a lot of people and thought oh it takes too much and you gotta season it and you gotta do this that and the other no let me tell you about this other thing I don't work for this company either but I should hold on I'm gonna show it to you after I stir in this Stirring these yummy apples into this risotto. Alright. You know I don't like to turn my back to you, but I gotta show you this genius thing. I guess I don't really have to turn my back to you. Hey, y'all get to see my cute outfit. Hey, hey, hey. Alright. So, this thing looks like a suit of armor or something. Chain link. We don't need it right now. I mean, I just cooked those uh, apples with some butter. I could just wipe that out and it'd be good. But let's say you do an egg or something in it. We use it for scrambled eggs too. And sometimes a little bit might stick on there. Put a little bit of water, no soap. Put this guy in here. You don't scrub it because then you scrub out all that seasoning. Um, but just lightly do that around comes right out dry it off if you need to season it again you can put it under some heat and then add your oil or whatever butter fat lard whatever you're going to use put it all over it wipe wipe out any excess let it sit on there um in the oven for a little bit so easy much easier than anything else then you're not using like any toxic things like uh teflon or any any of those non-stick things I don't really trust those conspiracy theorists. I'm just kidding. But there is science about that stuff, you know? Little bits get up in your food. No thanks. Y'all, this looks so good. Can you see it? I wish you could smell it. I'm getting an apple facial right now. Delish. So again, if you are a vegetarian and you want to stop here and you want to just Add your cheese because you're not vegan you're vegetarian this is not for a vegan person if you want to make it vegan use olive oil instead of butter and don't put cheese at the end <laughs> nothing against the vegan I love you vegan people but this is not for a vegan I think butter with this dish is what makes it good um, but the vegetarian dish of this with the cheese it's very filling, very delicious, very good. Um, if you are a meat eater, again, go get you a, a really good pork chop from somebody local and grill it or do it in the cast iron with some thyme and some shallots and some white wine deglaze. Serve it with this risotto or 
Maybe you like pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin would be delicious. Whatever kind of pork you like. I'm not a hater of any cut of pork. Cut of pork. I love it all. Really, I kind of like everything in general. Really not much I, I don't like. All right, y'all, we're almost there. You have been hanging with me till the end. You guys are my ride or die people. I want to thank you for being here with me. 19 minutes. See, we got one more minute. I got a little timer down here. But y'all are like, dang, she's good with time. Mm -hmm. Speaking of time. And no, I did not plan that. But it just kind of was a good segue. Speaking of time. Uh, we've got some fresh thyme here. Remember, I was pulling those off, uh, the leaves off of the stem. Just start at the top, whoop, like that, pull them off. Do not put the stems in with thyme. The thyme stem is really woody and wet. Alright, so give it a little chop chop. A little choppy chop chop. You don't have to chop it up too finely, but just to kind of release the oils a little bit and the flavor. Oh, this is gonna be dope. Did I just say that? That was kind of silly. It's gonna be dope, man. Let's taste it. I think we're there. And y'all, I did not stand here the whole time stirring it. Did you see that? So don't let anybody be a hater about risotto. You just tell them. You said, Tiny said, don't be a hater. Don't need no hateration, holleration, and a tannery. Y'all remember that song? I don't know the rest of it. Mmm! <laughs> okay. Definitely al dente. Just kind of stir it up. Ooh, ooh. Stir it up. Little darling. Stir it up. Oh, yeah. Alright, she's done important part because you made your own stock and you're a good boy or girl you made your own stock right you're gonna have to add some salt because it's not from the grocery store it doesn't have 8,000 bajillion milligrams of sodium in it so you're gonna get a good pinch of sea salt or Himalayan salt whatever you've got whatever you like get a good pinch and by good pinch I don't mean like I mean like with all your fingers an all finger, get your chubby fingers in there and get a good pinch. Maybe you might need two. Got some white pepper, bam, in there. Got some thyme. Going in. Oh, this looks so good. Very easy to make. I know you all, you all will make it, right? All right, now, butter, just because at the end, you always add butter off the heat. Okay, I've turned off the heat. You don't need cream because risotto by nature is creamy in texture, so you don't need to add cream. Fold that butter in. Mm. I'm about to drool in this stuff. <laughs> it's kind of gross, isn't it? But it's just me here, so it's not a big deal. Now, who's coming over for dinner? I see you, Lauren. You coming over for dinner? Alright, let's taste this beast. I really hate to do this in front of you because I feel like, man, I know you wish you were right here. It's alright. Oh, yeah. I want that pork chop though, right on top. I'm gonna cut me some pork chop, do that. I'm gonna use this little bowl to make a little presentation for you guys. I'm gonna take it to the next level for you. Put this in this little ramekin. Gotta love a ramekin. I'm taking it, taking it to the next level. You ready for this? Little drizz. You see what I'm doing? False on it. Oh, y'all. I forgot. Sometimes I get so excited 
that I forget things. It's all right. We gotta put that Humboldt fog in it. Oh my gosh, put this back in there. All right, let's try again. Humboldt fog, not Humboldt frog, Humboldt H U M B O L D T, Humboldt fog. Not humble frog, but you're gonna remember humble frog. You're gonna roll up in the whole foods like, hey, can I get some of that humble frog, please? Tiny chef said I need some. Yep. She's going in. Save that rind there. That's a little bit tough. Don't put that in your risotto. Just put the creamy stuff in. Again, if that's a little bit too much for you or you're kind of freaked out because it's got vegetable ash in it, I hear you. Um, maybe you'll try some gorgonzola. Maybe that freaks you out. So maybe instead you'll try some Pecorino Toscano or you'll try some Parmigiano Reggiano. But that's for sissies. Come on, just try it. You gotta try this stuff. I'm telling you, once you go to the Humboldt Fog, you never go back. I'm telling you. It's good stuff. Oh, oh, I can't even. The smell. We gotta taste this again. All right, let's try this presentation thing one more time. Take it to the limit one more time. Ooh, that was kind of crazy. All right, oh y'all, that looks so good. <laughs> okay, balsamic. Now this is, you know how I like to say it, not aged, I like to say, aged this is aged balsamic so it's reduced and kind of syrupy if you don't have aged balsamic you can just put it on a burner and age it yourself bon appetito y'all mm, i see a big chunk of humboldt fog <laughs> i can't even go it's making me cry this is one of the best risottos I've ever had. Oh, y'all, look, I'm crying. I get real caught up about food, you know? I just love it. Mmm. Mmm. That is good. All right, you better make this. And the first person to make it and put it, you got to post a picture on the Facebook or you gotta tag me on your Insta with the picture at the tiny chef. First person to do that gets a tiny farm honey mug. If you don't live close by, I'll ship it to you. So get to cooking. Love you guys. Ciao.